Hello everyone and welcome back to the SCG Game Night here at Grey Ogre Games powered by the Power 9 Podcast. My name is Mick. I'm one of your hosts alongside Chapman Sim. Hello everyone. Yeah, we're back. Uh, we're back again. Yeah, round 3 of this standard tournament. John Paul Po on the left hand side and Chin Hing on the right. Chin Hing is running what black white control? Yep, he is. Yeah. Uh, John Paul, well, not sure why he's running though, but... Uh, I suspect it's the green white tokens, but yeah, John oh, Paul is. One I of see language. Oh, okay, John Paul is one of those guys who likes to change out his deck like week on week. Uh, he's a brewer, so get a lot so of interesting decks out of him. Kind of shows up every week with a different deck. Yeah, yeah. Which oh, is why you know I like putting him on the uh, on the um, feature match area because he's always got some very interesting brew to uh, <laughs> to show off. And if it's not, you know, if it's not another deck deck, you know, it's uh, homebrew, which is great. Okay, so uh, Chin Hing is currently um, 2-0 and, oh, and John Paul is 1-1. One, one. Um, oh, okay. Um, he got pat down, but they're still going <laughs> to fight it out because, you know, they need an advanced standing for the monthly league. Yeah, exactly. This is only week two of the league. Yeah, so Yeah, and uh, Chin Hing rolled a uh, snake's eyes and he decided that his opponent didn't need to roll. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, you see John Paul going first and he kicks off with uh, Transgress, Transgress the Mind. The mind. Oh man, Kay. what do you take here? Well, we don't know what's in John Paul's hand, but I think uh, if we've got no way to deal with the Gideon, that'll be a good pick to take. Um, Chin Hing doesn't have the second white mana to cast Gideon, but then again, it's the most yeah. scary card in his hand. Exactly, you know, you, you have like three turns to draw a card, which, you know, possibly can be a white source, so, you know. Yeah, regardless, the, the impact of uh, Gideon is just too too big. La. I mm. think he's likely going to go for it. Yep. Yeah, it's either between the Gideon or the Languish, uh, but it looks like John Paul's running a black-red dragon's deck. Oh, no, oh okay. Nai oh, sorry, Madu Dragons. Madu, uh, huh? Kind of forge. Or Madu something. Who knows? Okay. Uh, it's going to take two off a eh, Read the Bones. Let's see. Was that a metal reshaper? Goodness. Seems to be. <laughs> okay. Uh, just going to draw those two cards and pass. Okay. No, no, no. Sorry. So evolving walls. Yeah. 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 Evolving. Okay, so um, both decks seem to be black-white based control decks. Um, mm -hmm. uh, John Paul splashing the red probably for a... Uh, Chandra? Chandra, yeah. Nahiri? Possibly. Possibly? Mm -hmm. Nahiri here will be pretty good though. Uh yeah, very <laughs> yeah, hard for Chin to deal with except for you know Ruinous uh, Path I'm making. Yeah. Okay, he doesn't have a fourth untapped land and um he's forced to put the evolving wilds. Mm. Let's see, Chin Hing. Chin Hing here has the option of uh, actually he does have the untapped land. He just has no play. Yeah, he has a mountain. Oh, yeah, yeah, he has a mountain in his hand. hand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All uh, good. All good. This is um another uh grindy attrition matchup. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yippee. Nowadays standard seems to be all about this kind of mid range decks. Now there's there's no really super fast deck. So Yeah, once you get to the end of a format, usually you you see a lot of uh, mid range to control decks uh start dominating the format because you know, they they kinda get the idea like especially control. You mm -hmm. kinda understand the meta game better. Right. Uh you know what to put inside your main board and your sideboard a little bit better. So makes sense, makes sense. Do a little better. Uh Kalita's here gonna see the battlefield, uh gonna hit the battlefield. And uh Kalita's usually pretty ah, good against yeah. other decks, but in this matchup it's Not just so good, yeah, yeah. it just no pretty features, much yeah. pretty much does nothing. And Chinning has a ton of removal. Uh, okay, like trying to go stuff. ahead in the card advantage department by drawing more cards. Uh, he's already got the secure the waste, just looking for that West Vale Airby, I suppose. Oh, but I see. Uh, just keeps a second secure the waste. Okay, uh, he still got a grass or darkness in hand, and I wish we could like blow this up. I uh, tried blowing this up before. It's also interesting that Chin Heng chose to tap the Cave of Coilos over the other swamp. Um, hmm? uh, well, it's. Maybe black right now. Right, this is a uh, Dark Dwellers. Okay. Flashing back, transgress the mind. Okay. Wow, it's gonna see a lot of goodies here. <laughs> wow, that's uh, a <gasps> double secure, double ruinous path, languish, um, Sorin, and another land. Man, uh, 
what do you think John's gonna take here? I don't know. I don't know the construction of his hand. If John's got, let's say, a uh, ruinous path, just take. You know, you don't have to worry about the Sorin. But you can't take the two uh, secure the ways. Okay. Yeah, so probably Sorin because he can actually follow up Sorin and kill the Dark Dwellers next yeah. turn. Uh, you know, this kind of signals to Jin Hing that uh, John Paul doesn't have any way to deal with uh, said Sorin. Okay, yeah, so having no other better use for Sorin, uh, for language, he decides to use it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to save the ruinous path for opposing planeswalkers. Like the Chandra that's going to hit the battlefield right now. And also, um, in this matchup, we can actually get to seven lands. So awakening a land is actually very relevant. Ah, uh, yes, that's true. Yeah, in case you get land flooded, at least you can get some value out of your useless lands. Uh, why did he cast the Chandra? It's going to die. Um, he doesn't really have much of a choice. Uh, because that's the only play. No, yeah. but you can be patient. Like otherwise, Chin Hing. But he has double ruinous path. You will need like double transgress. To get to it out, get yeah. So yeah. hitting for six here and forcing uh Chin Heng to use uh ruinous path is probably a good idea, mm -hmm. not only because you are forcing one copy out, you are also preventing a second f uh another four four creature from yeah. Okay, ah, that's true. Uh, fortunately um for for John Paul Chin Heng doesn't have a seventh land, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise um he would that have would got a four four in the meantime. Yeah. yeah. Snap. So this is a snap kill. Otherwise um it would put Chin Heng down to two. Yep. Which is really dangerous. Uh, oh, Jin Heng also running a Battlefield Forge, but I think he's only running a Battlefield Forge to get the colorless out of the lamp. Oh, yes. This I usually think. means that he's playing uh, a Drazi Displacer somewhere. Yeah, either yeah. in the sideboard or in, uh, possibly in the... Well, I don't think in the main board, possibly in the sideboard. And Thought Not Sears and Reality Smashers yeah, are also that is right. powerful cards. Uh, so I've, seen a, I've seen a build with all, th all three of them. Oh, man. In, in the sideboard. I... Now, I was playing a black white Eldrazi deck, mm -hmm. uh, ran for Thought Not Sears and for Reality Smashers main board. Yeah, in, Quite in, nice. in addition to the awkward um, <laughs> um, Battlefield Forges. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so since Chin He has two uh, secure the waste, he might fire off one right here, okay? Yeah, okay. He so that's six tokens. Shoke. Wouldn't it be cool if he like transform it right away? Uh, does he have the West Vale? Oh, yeah, yep, it's right the under the swamp. Okay. Uh, he's got to be worried that his opponent has uh, anguish of making. Anguish of making, yeah. So I think it's okay to just keep it in hand and just swing in for six. Okay, that works. So the issue I have with uh, I the issue I have with transforming right away is because you can always transform at instant speed, right? So yeah. you don't have to do it right now. Yeah, you can do uh, it in response to let's say you know John Paul's language or something like declaration that. Declaration in stone, mm. for example. Yeah. And anyway, he has a second um, secure the waste, and if he makes six more tokens this turn, he's actually lethal next turn. It's eighteen six. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Two, three, four, five, six, uh, yeah. So I think Chin Heng is probably very good at calculating the clock. So he probably has factored in this uh, in mine already. Mm. Uh, yeah. So let's see, John Paul, what he's gonna decide to do. Uh, he does indeed have the um, anguish I'm making in hand, but uh, yeah, choosing to just so take six damage. Perhaps he's. Uh, perhaps John Paul is kind of regretting his decision to cast the Chandra so early. Yeah. Because he's really seen the pair of Secure the Waste in Chin Heng's hand. So he could have saved the Chandra as a mass removal spell. Uh, what? I think the only way that uh, John Paul can get out of this right now... Oh, does he have a... Oh. Uh, Radiant Flames. Yeah, Radiant Flames, okay. Yeah, but he still has to deal with the Westfield Abbey. Uh, he has the... Ang I believe he's got an Anguish I'm making in hand. Okay. Uh, but let's see. I may be wrong. So one, two, three. Yep. So gonna fire off the. Okay, he's uh, Chin Heng declines to transform because he wants to fire off another secure the ways. Yep. Uh, yeah, good. Good play there. Heads up play there by Chin Heng. Of course, because you can always transform as well on your main turn. Yeah. You know, so you don't need to do it immediately. Ah, to to just to check yeah. clear, yeah? Yeah. Uh, does he still have enough mana to transform? Yes, he does. Of course. So got eight mana. Oh, this is going to be very bad. Uh, going to take away the anguish I'm making, possibly. Right. Yep. Wow. Uh, that came at a very timely that top deck, yeah. I don't think he has. Uh -huh. This is interesting. I, I wouldn't do that because... 
Well, there's a possibility to gain... Does uh, uh, John Paul have four black mana? Can we check? No, he doesn't. Uh, one, two... Okay, no. that's the thing. Um, he can double Chin, language. Ch- yeah, Chin Heng probably uh, did a quick check as well and determined that it couldn't work. Yeah. So he decided to put his opponent down to one. Oh, wow, that double language would yeah. be really bad if he... <laughs> yeah, but then again, by, uh, then again, you already saw his hand, so you're not going to walk into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Putting oh, yeah. putting it down to one is also relevant because you can't use any of your pain lens. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Jin Heng here neatly takes game one. Uh, secure the waste for the yeah. win. Secure the waste, double secure the waste. You can see that um, John Paul actually has Hello Moonlight in the main deck. Oh, okay. Well, uh, no, no, that, that, no, in his sideboard. It's coming in right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he, uh, if, if he had it in his main deck. You know, Green White yeah. is something that has been running rampant. And Collector I mean, Company as well. Yeah, exactly. So it's a very strong card anyway. Uh, and the fact that it just cycles, you pay two mana and you know, yeah, that's card. right. So most of the builds actually, all these black white decks, they actually play two in the main deck. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, it's never really a dead card. You can cycle it away, yeah. get some value, and it's pretty good against most of the decks in the meta game. Even even the blue red deck. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it's no, it's, it's, it's not terrible. You know, you can always cyborg it out later. <laughs> it, it's fine. <laughs> it does it does some work. And yeah. Sometimes you know you hit the displacer. And then you right. can, you know, the, the combo, five yeah. Mana, yeah. Five mana, get rid of a creature for good. And uh, Hello Moonlight is actually really good in this matchup because you can't actually transgress the mine it away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, so it's right. like, oh, I want to kill, I want to clear the way for my secure the ways. Oh, but I can't deal with the Hello Moonlight unless I have duress, you know? I think they would swap out the uh, transgress the mines for duresses at this point, right? And take out their mm, languishes. They might keep, they might just keep um, bo- uh, all of few. them, all of the all of the hand disruption in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just turn their deck into the Yu Gi Oh hand destruction deck, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Destroy! Give me your cards! Oh. Always nice to have more information. Mm. Uh, I suspect Jin Hing might sideboard into uh, Thought Not Sears as well. Yeah, that is a really uh, good card in this matchup because uh, not only do you get to exile a removal spell, um, you get you to exile anything. Yeah, and no, you get exile removal spell and you start beating down. Oh uh, yeah, for four, yeah. four, you know, uh, it dies to grass or darkness. Yes, but uh, you know, usually John Paul might bought some of them out because this is a control matchup. Yeah, and Jin Hing is creatureless in the main deck. So, so you might just spot removal swap, might right? just go out, yeah. yeah. And uh, if he's playing ultimate prize, it should go as well, because there's really no colored creature that he wants to kill. Mm. Not well, many. Not, not for much value anyway. Yeah. If if you were Chin Hing, would you bought in Kalitas? It makes no sense, right? No, I. Well, there's there's some life gain. There's you know there is some life gain to be had, but uh, not I not really good so. in this matchup, yeah. Hey, hi Andrea, how are you doing? Yeah, Capolo forty two. Hello, uh, Capolo forty two. Uh, tunes in every week. Oh, uh, that's nice. Yeah. Although no, right now it's ten a.m. where you are. Aren't you supposed to be at work right now? <laughs> no, I track them. I track where all these people come from. I see. Yeah. I see. Uh, I'm not some stalker or anything. I <laughs> hey, wouldn't no, believe no, that. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Okay, so uh, seven a.m. Um, where is uh Capolo forty two from? Uh, San Diego, yeah. San Diego. Oh, yeah, hi, SD. welcome. If I'm not wrong, if I remember correctly, San Diego. Uh, so we have a very um dedicated fan right here. He wakes up in the morning, grabs his coffee, and then locks on. <laughs> Thank you so Twitch much. Is, yeah. Twitch. Okay, so out. just to remind, uh, refresh the memory of those people who just logged in. Um, yeah. we're having a matchup between um. John Mardu, Paul, yeah. Yeah. Mardu, Mardu versus White Black Control, yeah, yeah? and uh, Chin Heng just took game one. Okay. And is that a transgress? Yes, yeah, it is. John Paul going to lead off with the transgress. Going to oh okay, uh, John Paul probably sideboarded in some ruinous paths. Uh, oh, we see a thought knots here as well, so he might just take oh. Okay, he quickly identifies Read the Bones as one of the more scary cards because uh, Chin Hing has a land light hand mm-hmm. uh, and uh, he, he, he has a lot of expensive him. spells in his hand. So yeah. if, if, if he doesn't cast Read the Bones, then he's probably mana screwed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, here, Chin Hing going to... I think you take out the Thought Knots here at this point. No, okay, so he decides uh, Well, to he does have a lot of gene. removal on his hand, so he doesn't need That's to be... True, yeah. yeah, so he'd rather deal with something that he can't deal... Uh, rather take out something he can't deal with. 
So uh, and if the top notch seal comes down, it's like a one for one. Mm. But Omnisilis is always like two for one. Yeah, well, Omnisilis is also a draw engine. That, yeah. You know, once it gets going and you can't deal with it, like it's going to be a bit tough. He did see also. <laughs> he threw another bit no. to bones. <laughs> okay. Is he gonna go? No. Uh, I would. I would still take it. You know, and still, and I would still yeah, take it. Two and two cards. Yeah. Yeah, and hope that Chinning doesn't have a land. I mean, looking at Scry two and draw two is looking at the top four cards. You know, mm-hmm. it will get him out of his mana fix. All right, so Chin Hing also Chin Hing did not draw the land. Uh, John Paul here also not drawing lands, but he's got read the bones oh, himself. Wow. Yeah, why not strip your opponent of both his read the bones? So um, read the bones. Uh, actually, if you know uh Owen Turtle World, he actually calls read the bones the best card in standard right now. What? Yeah, draw because he's biased and he <laughs> he he loves his black white deck. You know, oh, a lot man. of people would say Dromokas Command, Gideon, or Collector oh, Company, nice. but no. In Owen's eyes, it's read, it's the bones. read the bones. So you can see the war between all the read the bones right now. <laughs> a testament of how important the card is in this matchup. Uh, oh, that's another one. Read the bones, of course. Yeah. So it not only smooths out his draw, it filters away unnecessary uh, removal that he doesn't need at this point. Yeah, so he's really, really ahead at this. Uh, really, really ahead right now. And yeah. what Hing's just not drawing any lands. One, two, three, four, yeah. What John Paul ri- needs right now is just make sure that he doesn't miss his land drops. Uh, here he's going to hit. He's going to get grasp in, yeah, in response. Grasp. Okay, this is interesting because uh, Chin Hing draws a card first and Jeez. then... Oh, dear. <laughs> Nothing good. Is that oh three man. Gideons? Did he just draw three Gideons? Three Gideons. Oh, to my God. To ruin the spa. Oh, my God. That is so annoying. Like, hey, yeah. I want to land and then you give me three Gideons yeah. that I cannot cast. Oh, man. This is... I don't even know what to take at this point. Probably the Ruinous Path because it's the only relevant one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Chin still needs two more white sources for Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, Chin Hing getting there. Slowly getting there. He needs one more mana. Then he can actually start doing things. Uh, I would be a little worried actually because um, if John Paul doesn't put up any pressure and Chin Hing actually recovers, yeah, the John prospect in a of... a lot of trouble, man. Yes, like because three Gideons to deal with is a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he can probably drop Sorin right here, but it will just walk into uh, Ruinous Path, so he declines. Probably attack for two with Shambling Van. Yeah, I think that feels like the. Well, does he have. Well, he could use the. Yeah, that's what. Oh, right oh, oh, he oh, has, he has needle, needle Spires. spires. Okay, okay, it hits for more. Okay, that's, that's good. I didn't well, see I the Needle ca- Spires. I, d- I don't know. Would you keep the mana up for the. to the slaughter? Uh, doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, to the slaughter doesn't hit the planeswalker at this point, does it? Uh, no, no. But in response to the activation of the ability, uh, you can right. to the slaughter and uh, get rid of the planeswalker, leaving the creature behind. It's probably it's gambling. Okay. Uh, he c- the the thing is, you can uh, he's probably gambling on Chinning not drawing. Not drawing uh, anymore. Lens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. The curse is real, people. I think it was a good keep though because uh, he was on the draw. And uh, yeah, you can see, you know, you see that one extra card. You've got to read the bones as well. So yeah. Um, but unfortunately, I mean, just you know, sometimes it's games fine. Just have um, he's not out of the game yet. Mm-hmm. We'll see. It's still at sixteen fifteen. Like many things can happen. Chin Hing already has uh, four lands, which means that he can start just putting down threats after threat. Uh, but let's see what Chandra's actually has. pretty good here because. Uh, if you drop the Chandra, um, oh, you can yeah, you can start beating in. Uh, you know, he's got to either okay, he's going to play around the Gideon right now, and just pass the turn. Okay, so right. he keeps up the to the slaughter mana for the Gideon. Uh, so let's see what Chin Hing does. Don't think he will do anything. Other than Gideon, I mean, he does have <laughs> he does have three of them. Just go, man. Yeah. And yeah, let's Gideon. not forget, he also gets a token, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so at least got something to block. With. Right. Uh. I don't think he will block. I think he will keep it around to protect the next Gideon. Mm. Mm. Okay. Good point. Uh, it might be another two to slaughter. <laughs> but you never know, man. You never know. Most of them play only one. Let's see. Uh, Ruinous? Okay. Oh, grasp. Okay. Grasp, and then he's just going to swing in for four damage. Okay. okay. 
So uh, Chinese down to nine. Get in number two, going down to eight. Oh, he's got to pay one life to. Oh, yeah, okay, because of the caves. Caves was quite lost. Ouch. Okay. So let's see, what does John Paul have in hand? Uh. So he could grasp and then swing in with the needle spires, but I don't think that's advancing the game at all. He's considering the Goblin Duck Dwellers because um, or he can he can present a he can put a threat on the board to pressure the planeswalkers. Mm. But what is a good spell to flash back? Any suggestions? Uh, read the bones. Read the bones. <laughs> <laughs> best, best card spell ever. Uh, yeah. Best spell ever, yo. Well, read the bones might be good just now, but he's facing a pair of Gideons. Yeah. I have no clue. Uh, man, Is that a grasp in his hand? I'm just wondering whether he's got delirium in his graveyard. I don't think so. Creature, land, instant, and but I don't think that's a sor No, that's a sorcery. So you could actually just... He he does have delirium. Yeah, I think he does. Mm -hmm. Oh man, man! Creature land, creature land sorcery. Uh, the sorcery is the read the bones, and the instant speed is um grasp, grasp or darkness. Yeah. What's the land? Uh, there was a evolving mouse. Which ah, and, uh, you're right. Yeah. So that's actually quite a good play, man. Yeah, I well I don't Gideon know killer. why you yeah I don't know why you had to wait a while to think about that play. It was probably double checking. Step, yeah. Snap. Well, some people forget that uh, Goblin Dark Dwellers eats up the spell in the graveyard. So sometimes they only Upon resolution, like he has no delirium. Yeah, then <laughs> when you... <laughs> they're like, oh shit, I missed it. Yeah, so it's the Tamagoy uh, thing all over again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I fireball, you know, I lightning bolt your Tamagoy. Nope, it doesn't die. So if he drops the Gideon now, it's actually GG for the Gideon. So okay, Shin so Heng goes with the Sorin. Sorin is still dead because there are man lands on the board. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's better than uh, getting beaten down by a 4-4. Four four. Yeah, and he knows that, so he just, you know, minus 5 of the Sorin, so that, uh, you know, John Paul has to still answer the Sorin. But, uh, Fireball, let's see. Okay, let's take a look okay, at what's going on. Mind. Going to probably take the Ruinous Path. Yep. And uh, he's going to drop his own Sorin, get rid of his opponent's Sorin. Not bad. Not a bad turn. Minus one. Wow, that is great. Mm -hmm. Oh, he, he decides to minus a few, not just minus one. Um, He did? Yeah, he was at... Oh, he was at 18, yeah? Okay, no, just no, minus no. one. Okay. So, um, Chen Heng passes the turn and um, presenting the secure the wastes. Yeah. Plus one, Kalita is going to hit for four. And. Uh, Would be nice to drop Kalidas and keep Shambling Vents up to block the incoming six tokens. Mm. Let's see. Is there enough mana? Yeah, there's wow. more than enough mana. Shin Heng is recovering pretty well <laughs> uh, after missing like a million land drops. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, he still, he doesn't have Westville Abbey unfortunately. Which or does he? Here I think you just Gideon and get the emblem. Really? Right? Yeah. So you can get rid of the Sorin. Uh, you're still running into uh, you're still running into the Kalidas. Do yeah. Okay, so he's got two blockers. He's got two blockers. You can get rid of the Sorin. Unfortunately, you know things are just going to beat you down. Uh, oh, okay. Ah, oh, he can't even kill the Sorin because of the grasp. <laughs> <laughs> but you can get rid of three guys. Because uh, he can activate Shambling Vans block, and then before and then damage. The oh wait, he doesn't have enough black mana. 
Does he? No, he's got one black, one white. Is that white. a case of Coilos? Does yeah. he have three black? Yeah, he, needs, yeah. he needs three black. So, yeah, there's three black ah, okay. mana. One of them will be... Wow, so you can actually block one of the soldiers uh, and then... Uh, block two of the soldiers and, and kill one. grasp one other one. Even if the emblem kick in... Uh, you'll still kill the Sorin. Ah. Yeah, but, you know, Chin Heng will be left with like three tokens <laughs> on the swing back. <laughs> she's going to die because he's going to face down a... Uh, uh, what's that? The Little Spires, Spires and, and Shambling Van. Van. So that's what? 6, 9 damage exact sees. Yep, that's so exact. Uh, Jin here, forced to charm block. Okay, so he's going for the emblem. As expected, but I think he needs to block. If he doesn't, he's probably dead. I'm sure you can see both men lands on the board. Yeah. He did get hit by both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so he's okay, so sending five. sending in. Okay, um, what's going on? Because uh, didn't Chin Hing see the grasp in the hand? You can see it right now. <laughs> so can he? So couldn't he grasp the untapped blocker? Uh, let Sorin die. Grasp the untapped blocker and, and then swing, swing for the wing. Right? Yeah. So okay, he's so dead. Right. He's dead on the board right now. Okay, but yeah, but right now John, John Paul, Paul may not realize exactly. So John Paul like is is tunnel visioning. Uh, tunnel visioning yep, right now. So. Just uh, thinking about how to protect his Sorin when he's already won. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so you can just block. It's okay. Just block one of them, gain some life. Or block two of them, gain some life. And then you know what's the thing? Off. He might actually figure out next turn because none of his creatures actually die. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll be like, okay, let's see how to save Sorin now. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. He does so a slide. Does, okay. Yeah. So he's going to grasp. No, he should just block one so he can gain some life. No, it's fine. He's already won. There is no one mana spell. Uh, dead weight. Uh. Dead weight is not an instant. <laughs> <laughs> so it's there. <laughs> yep. So does he animate both lands? Come on. And hey, you've got you got an, a, another land in hand that your opponent knows. Just lay it down and beat beat face. Yep. Okay. Okay. That's game, boys. So with this swing, he will be tied at one apiece and Chin Heng scoops up his cards. Kabow, all right. Okay, so he was nearly um, about to recover. <laughs> yeah, well, but close, no. close. He took too much damage um, at yeah. the beginning. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so we're going to go to game three between uh, John Popo and Chin Heng. If you're just joining us, you're watching the SCG Game Night here at Grey Ogre Games. My name is Mick. I'm one of your hosts alongside Chapman Sim. Hello, yeah. everyone. Uh, Again. Yeah. So, yeah, we are watching this game between John Paul and Chin Heng. John Paul running a black Mardu, more Mardu uh, control deck. Uh, whereas Chin Heng is running black white control. Uh, you know, I don't see either player. Maligan, uh, sorry, not maliganing. Sideboarding again, which well, kind of makes sense, I guess. If you're on the play or on the draw, you know, doesn't really matter. Uh, you just want to disrupt your opponent's hand. Well, your goal is to disrupt your opponent's hand and uh, land a threat and make sure it sticks. Uh, but I think Chin Heng's deck has uh, more threats in forms of Planeswalkers that uh, John Paul might not be able to deal with effectively. But John Paul does have the Goblin Dark Dwellers, which, you know, doubles back his spells. So Value, value. Yeah, value down. So let's see. Uh, maybe Chin Heng will do what John Paul did last turn. Just strip away all your read the bones and make sure you don't draw anything relevant. So. Hmm. Chin Heng here has well some lands not enough to cast all his spells but I think he'll just keep uh, John Paul going to Mulligan here yeah going down to 6 I <laughs> don't think hurts this deck too much especially with uh, you know cards like Read the Bones and like some draw engines like uh, what's his name Opnixilis so yeah, but too, going right. down to six, it's uh, just very dangerous um, always because yeah. um, you still need a lot of lands for this deck to operate. Mm -hmm. This is not the type of deck that can operate with two or three mana. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> mana hungry, actually. Couple of uh, down to five. Yep, of course. Because six is just too easy, right? 
I'm gonna give him a bit of uphill battle. I uh, I had a friend in Porto, and he wanted to set up this website called Maligan to Five. Oh dear! And then the tagline is the cause six is just too easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Good game, man. <laughs> so, people who watch that stream never get to seven cards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, oh man, jump he keeps off. a hand with like almost no lands. Yeah, that's I see one land. Super land light. Uh, that's the black white land. Uh, Oh, this That's is this is a tough one. Okay, yeah, okay so, he decides yeah. that his deck's not gonna operate at one or two, so yeah. he goes down to five. That's a good call, man. That's a good call. Uh, you know, some people uh. are very risk risk takers. Uh, I don't know. Are you a risk taker or risk averse? Uh, I would mulligan that hand. You mulligan that hand. Okay. Yeah, the, the the deck is so mana hungry. It does nothing on turn one and turn two, mm. and without three or four mana, you're just doing nothing. Yep. Yeah. I think Maligan down 5 is not so bad, you know, but uh, it but at does this reduce point, your chances. Um, if I have two lands, I would just keep, so. Mm. Yep. Anything more than two lands is a snap keep. Yeah. I would keep a hand in five lands. Yeah. Okay, he has Chandra, which is not a good sign. Evolving okay, Wilds, planes. Three okay, lands. that's not too bad, because yeah. he does have three lands and a removal spell. Uh, he gets scries. a scry. Uh, okay, the card is not something he wants. Yeah, he, and he's on the draw too, so it's okay. Uh, he's probably going to search for a mountain here and then pass the turn. Uh, no, okay. Decides not to search his library. Uh, um, so he probably has nothing to do on turn yeah. two anyway. So he feels that he shouldn't be thinning down his deck. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. Here we're going to see. Yep. Oh, dear. Gideon gonna hit the battlefield. Okay, Evolving Walls needs to go right now. <laughs> Going for a swamp. Yeah. Either a swamp or He needs to cast Runa's Path. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where's my swamp? Okay, there <laughs> it is. There it is. He yeah. would be so screwed if he was only playing one swamp. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so that's where all the lands are, the bottom half of the deck, or the bottom third of the deck. Right. This is why you should always um, shuffle enough. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's variance. It's that's variance, true, yeah. That's true random, yeah. Clumping of, uh, clumping of cards. Just make sure you don't um, mana weave. <laughs> 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 Judge! Okay, um, Rainer's Path takes down very scary Gideon. Gone. And uh Yeah, there was one time I was playing this uh mirror match, uh black white mirror match. Mm -hmm. So I was on the draw and I had to kill three Gideons in a row. And I got just <laughs> I, I just got killed by the just three soldiers. The the three allies. The so he just went two, allies. four, six. And then six damage. Yeah. Oh, wow, that is hilarious. Exactly. Okay, so uh, uh, uh yeah, empty sorry, secure the waste, uh gonna produce three tokens, gonna hit him for five damage each turn. I think you just mitigate one. Yep. yep. Take down one and take two D damage. He also needs to make sure that um he doesn't reach five mana for the Westfield Abbey. Oh man, yeah. Oh my god. Okay. okay. So Omnic Silis, very good draw engine and right now, yeah, uh jump out just hurting. He needs some land. So the funny thing <laughs> about this turn is that Whatever he casts is gonna kill himself. <laughs> because <laughs> read the bones will lose him two life and oh. anguish and make him uh loses Makes him three, three life. Yeah. Ouch. Okay, so really, really painful. Um and Chin Hing is just gonna keep drawing cards. Yep. Uh it's gonna steamroll over, you know, jump jump up all cause So if you think about it, right, um John Paul is already at two life. Because he needs to uh anguish, anguish on making, making the, the Omnix list yep. and take three more. Otherwise, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Virtual. <laughs> so it's like a virtual two life, and with the shambling vents, I think the match is almost done. Uh, he has the goblin dark dollars now, which probably can get rid of uh this the Sorin, likely. He can stop some of the damage coming through. Yeah, but Sorin's sitting right there. It will kill the goblin dark dwellers. And he uh, so yeah, either yeah. the Omnic Silas will probably kill him or the Sorin will kill him. And he doesn't know that Chin Hing has a reality smasher. <gasps> oh dear, oh my god. I didn't, I, I didn't realize that either. That's 8 damage on the board. Hey. Yep, so... <laughs> Chin Hing's um, 
feeling very comfortable holding the reality smasher. <laughs> Reality Smash is really good in this matchup because it guarantees that you 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 earn a card, you know. Yeah, it's two for one, man. Yeah, Thank and o- the only clean way to deal with it is um, Omnixilis and uh, yeah, Sorin, but you've already taken five, you know. Yeah. So you're still losing out either way. Yep. A really really good card in this mirror, uh, in this sort of mirror match. Mm-hmm. Um, John Paul's doing the math, not knowing that he's already dead. Ah, <laughs> uh, so let's see. I mean, he has two. <laughs> There's two planeswalkers right there, you know. Oh wait, he doesn't have double red. <laughs> he doesn't have double red. Yeah, he can't cast the um, Chandra. The not Chandra, the uh, Goblin Dark Dwellers. Oh I right, realize, yeah, I right, right. The right. Planes was I didn't problem. realize either. Damn. I guess it doesn't matter then. Yeah. So. I mean, even if he does have the red, he's dead anyway. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, he's more dead. Now though uh, he casts for the slaughter for to sacrifice one, one token. token. Yeah, he has a chance. Nope. No, no chance. Yep, that's three from the Sorin and five from Smasher, and that's game. Yeah, okay. All right, hey, congratulations, uh, Chin Hing. You got your three zero. Yay! Yay! I think Chin Hing. I don't know whether Chin Hing came last week. I need to go and check the standings, but yeah, I have a feeling Chin Hing is on the top of the standings. For the SCG But game. it's still early It's only week 2 right Yeah exactly We still got yeah. 2 more weeks to go People So anybody can Beat Chin Hing Right Yeah So, <laughs> come, down, uh, so come down to Grey Ogre Games You know Beat the beat the shit out of Chin Hing I mean on the On the battlefield Not the So next week's gonna be The last time we'll be Playing this standard Uh Will be next week. Next week mm-hmm. is the same. And oh then yeah, uh, the final week will be something very interesting. Yeah. So everybody is gonna be oh. saying, "Oh, I'm playing with these decks." But hey, on the last turn, when everybody's trying to chase up with each other, we are gonna all play with new decks. <laughs> That's gonna be very interesting. All right, Capolo. Thanks. I hope to see you in Singapore in the next like two to three weeks. Then. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh. You've been watching the SCG Game Night here at Grey Ogre Games, powered by the Power 9 Podcast. My name is Mick. I'm one of your hosts alongside Chapman Sim. Hello. Uh, yeah, we're just about to go for the night. Thanks for tuning in to this standard tournament. But before we go, I'd like to remind you that you can catch us every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday streaming standard modern and legacy no sorry vintage but we're going to change it to legacy i think anyway oh really yeah yeah there's uh i would actually play legacy you want to play legacy yeah yes. i don't have moxon man oh no but it's a uh, vintage playtest night ah. so you, can bring out, you can bring out up to 10 playtest cards which means that you can have like all your power nine can i bring my collector's edition play sets I don't know. I don't that see works, why not. That works, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, there's no. There's somebody who does use the. Uh, yeah, I I have I have a set of my own. Yeah, man. The all the moxes and the. Uh, but I don't have anything else. No. no? <laughs> yeah, man, man, then, just, then use those and then play test the rest of the cards. I could also hit the counters and buy me a case of Eternal Masters and hope to get a set of Force of Wills. Wow, well, easy. Yeah, yeah easy, 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 easy. It's only one case, you know. <laughs> it's no problem. All right. Uh, yeah, Mikael's gonna buy me a case. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, random prides of insanity I think uh, okay thanks. so yeah I next Tuesday standard Wednesday modern Thursday vintage slash maybe legacy and yeah. yep good night guys yeah uh yeah uh wait before we go oh also, not yet yeah the weekends sometimes we have streams uh but to keep yourself updated make sure you follow our Facebook page uh, all the links are in the description below and finally uh, do pay our partners a little listen uh, they're the Power9 podcast tomorrow coming out of a new episode uh, which involves about the buyouts and all that shit that's, that's happening Ooh. recently uh, but yeah we're going to go off thank you for tuning in so for myself and Chapman we are signing out okay good night ciao <laughs>